name's Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today we're looking at the ATI Radeon HD5750 one gigabyte graphics card. As technology has developed over time you will notice that this graphics card is quite low profile. It's got quite a small heatsink on it and has got this brightly coloured red fan in the middle with the ATI Radeon logo. Other than that there's no other graphics on the card. No sort of design style or anything like that purely because it is a reference card directly from AMD. Looking at the back of the card, we can see that it uses this dark coloured PCB. There's a couple of barcode stickers here and down here. This is for any RMA issues. You can give them the various different serial numbers. We can also see this bracket, which on the other side is the GPU with the heatsink, which is bolted from this side. Taking a look at the cooling on the card now, we can see that we've already spoke about this red fan in the middle, which is going to help cool the GPU. It's got this sort of plastic casing over the heatsink which is underneath. This is made out of metal and has fins which go all the way around the graphics card. We can notice that by having these fins it's going to help dissipate heat. Over here is where the fan plugs in. Looking at the full specifications of the card it has a core clock speed of 700 megahertz, uses 720 stream processing units, has DirectX 11 technology, shader model 5.0 technology and OpenGL 3.2 support. It comes supplied with one gigabyte of GDDR5 memory operating at a speed of 1150 MHz. It has a 128-bit memory interface and has a maximum resolution of 2560 by 1600. The bus type on this graphics card is of course PCI Express 2.0. Before we received this graphics card as a review sample, we was on a conference call with AMD and one of the main things that they tried drumming into our minds is uh, amongst some of the other technologies like DirectX 11 and Shader Model 5.0 technology is the fact that it uses hardly any power at all, even at a load state or an idle state, hence why it only has one 6-pin PCI Express adapter as opposed to two which most graphics cards of this performance will have. As technology has got even better over time, there is the possibility of adding multiple graphics cards and running them in a dual or triple configuration. With this graphics card, it has the ports up here for a Crossfire configuration. As we were talking about the cooling earlier, it is quite an open planned graphics card. There's one fan in the middle, but the heatsink dissipates heat in all directions. Because it will dissipate heat towards the back of the card, there are these ventilation ports here, and this will take up two PCI slots in your case. When the 5700 series graphics cards were on the drawing board and they were thinking up the design and the functionality, they did want to cater for all connections. That's why this card has two DVI ports, a HDMI port, and the newer display port. Some of the other features that this graphics card has is ATI iFinity, which is a multi-display technology which will drive three displays simultaneously with independent options. This will include different resolutions and refresh rates. It also has ATI iVivo, which is HD video and display technology, and ATI PowerPlay power management technology, which is dynamic power management with low power idle states and multi-GPU configurations. Now looking at the part of the review where we take a look at the price, with this graphics card it is an AMD reference card, so you will find that a lot of companies who actually stock it will stock it as their own. Now the cheapest price we were actually able to find was from a company called CCL Online, and it was actually branded as a CCL Choice Radeon HD 5750 1GB, and it was for the price of £95.99. and pence. <laughs> I know for a fact that a lot of people based around the forums and uh, you know enthusiast websites have actually been waiting nearer Christmas for the DirectX 11 cards to come out. The 5.8 series were the first to come out and now the 5.7 series. Uh, this card is more 
aimed at the budget market that's still offering fantastic value for money and fantastic performance. If you are in the market for a new graphics card and possibly you're looking at something like the, the 400 series, one of the top end ones, personally I'd, I'd look at one of these. It doesn't perform as well, but being of the newer technologies, it's, it's got some more advanced features like DirectX 11, uh, ATI, Affinity and so on. So that's why I'm going to give this card 5 out of 5 stars.